Hello everyone, you're welcome back to the Irish Mammy channel. A few quick jobs to do today, uh, mostly seed sowing to be done. Um, I plan on doing, you can see loads of plants there behind me. I'm starting to run out of room in the greenhouse and I'm soon going to need to move all these plants out to get the greenhouse itself planted up. Um, so I'm going to do a quick wee tour of the uh, plants I have grown in the greenhouse as well. Today I'm sowing um, cucurbits, which is a fancy way of saying um, cucumbers, courgettes, squash, both summer and winter squash. Um, I do also have some uh, peas to sow. I forgot to throw a few peas in one of the beds outside. I'm actually going to do uh, peas in two of the beds outside and they're just going to be squeezed into the very edge of the bed. Um, and just munch two peas for out there. I'm also going to uh, grow podding peas, um, our normal peas that we eat. Uh, and I'm going to sow those today and I'm hoping I'll have space in a ridge very soon for planting them out as well. Um, so lots of seed sowing still to be done. Um, these I wait till the end of April to sow all of these squash, cucumbers, courgettes, all those type of plants uh, because they absolutely hate the cold. They will just die a death at the thought of cold. Um, so they're going to be sown now, uh, propagated or germinated in the propagator um, and I'll then take them out of the propagator pretty much as soon as they germinate if I remember but my track record's not great on that. Um, get them used to the greenhouse conditions and then uh, in about a month's time, um, maybe earlier depending on the weather, I'll uh, gradually acclimate some of them to outdoor temperatures. Uh, cucumbers I always grow inside in the greenhouse um, we just don't have uh, hot enough summers or at least they're not hot enough for long enough um, for cucumbers outside in my opinion um, I know there are specific varieties that do better outdoors but I have yet to find one that produces well enough so um, I well I have greenhouse space anyway so I'll put them in the greenhouse uh, also gherkins they're the very same um, they're just a different variety of cucumber basically um, I'll be sowing those as well today um, so everything else the squash pumpkins and courgettes will all likely go outside I'm um, in two minds about the courgettes I have to find space for them first um, but if I have outdoor space they will be going outdoors uh, courgettes if, which are also called zucchini um, they're a very prolific plant um, when they're grown indoors in a greenhouse or polytunnel they can produce absolute trillions of food <laughs> of courgettes uh, so courgettes are one of those plants that all gardeners do joke about um, you know if you grow a couple of courgette plants you'll basically have courgettes for the parish um, you'd be sick looking at them uh, we all oh, most gardeners have found a very innovative way of using up uh, courgettes uh, and i have tried many of those over the years um hopefully i'll be able to show you some of those methods later on in the summertime uh, but growing them outdoors in our climate is one way of controlling them but again they're a plant that can't go out until the threat of frost is completely gone and not only that the, it needs to have warmed up quite significantly so Certainly, we're looking at the end of May before we'll be putting them outside. Uh, but again, you never know, we might get a lovely spell of weather mid-May uh, and I'd chance it if I thought it was going to stay warm for a significant amount of time. Uh, so that's the jobs we're going to do today. Um, I'll take you through the specific varieties now in a wee few minutes. Uh, first, I want to get my peas sown outside. Now, these are just mange two peas i'm growing a green mange two pea and a purple mange two pea um really only growing about uh five or six plants of each just on the narrow end of my beds outside um i have to put in the trellis for them yet as well um now these aren't for high production um i i'm really only growing them to well first of all you could chop them pick them and chop them young um for thrown into salads or you can let them grow on a wee bit and throw them into a uh, stir fry. I just find they're a very tasty addition, nice and colourful as well um, and handy to have. Uh, 
you know during the summer when you just fancy a bit of a crunch in your either stir fry or salad one or the other uh, very tasty very easy to grow um, no podding involved you know if you grow the normal peas which I am growing as well but um, it can be a laborious task podding a load of peas um, and you could be podding for an hour and you still wouldn't have enough to feed the family so um, mons should go a little bit further just because they're that bit bigger and there's much less work to them um, okay let's get on with it So the two varieties I'm planting today are uh, Shiraz, which is a nice purple potted uh, Mange 2 pea. I've grown these before. Uh, they do grow quite prolific, so five or six plants is loads. Um, and they really are best for fresh eating. I have tried freezing these, but they just don't uh, hold their crunch the same way as a fresh one does. Um, and this, this, that's the same for the other one as well. This is called Caribbean de Mozan. It's very French. Um, this is a really big potted uh, Mange 2P. Um, and again, quite prolific as well. Uh, so five, six plants is plenty. Uh, and I'm just, you can see the narrow edge. I'm just going to put them in along the narrow edge of those beds there. Um, and it's a great way of tucking in a little bit more um, edible produce just on the edges of the uh, raised beds uh, and you'll find I do that quite a lot tucking in bits and pieces here and there um, just to make full use of the space that I have even though I hope to have the ridges out in the field um, in the next few weeks um, I still like to get as much uh, production out of the raised beds that I have here Okay, so I just dodged the rain there. Glass are still covered in rain, but anyway. Uh, we're going to get to the seed sowing part now. A um, few things I would just want to say about these, all these seeds that I'm growing now, they're all bigger seeds. Um, and whereas up until now, the smaller seeds I've all been have all been sown in um, seed compost. These bigger seeds um, are able to be so you can sow these in potting soil that's because um they're just a more robust plant um or seed 
um, so they're, they're stronger they have a stronger root and a stronger um, shoot as well when they germinate so they're able to push through the soil um, much easier just because they're that bit bigger um, I don't recommend using seed compost actually for these bigger seeds because the thing about them uh, because they're bigger seeds they're hungrier plants so they'll use the nutrition in the soil faster uh, and like I said before when I was doing one of my seed sown videos which I'll throw a link to up here um, the uh, seed compost doesn't have any or very much nutrition in it at all so that's why um, because these are hungrier feeders uh, it's another reason to give them potting compost so the first seeds I'm sown today are my dwarf beans now these aren't pictorial packets as usual now, I had awful trouble germinating these last year um, so I'm a little bit early germinating them this year but I'm the reason I'm doing it so early is because I want to be sure that uh, they actually germinate um, I may have to re-sow and I want to have them ready to plant out the end of May so they get a good crop this year um, so I'm, basically what I'm doing is a test germination um, and if I see they're germinating well I will then sow um, hopefully in a week or so they'd have germinated and I'll sow um, more than when I know that they are working um, I sowed these three times last year and had I think maybe two seeds germinated out of um, I want to say about 24 each time so 324s you can do that math um, but basically two seeds germinated out of the whole lot and uh, I've had several things that I'm growing this year that I tried to grow last year the same seed stock the same seed packet and um, that didn't germinate last year and have germinated germinated this year I'm blaming the compost um, maybe the temperatures in the middle of the summer had something to do with it um, I'm not I can't just attest to that but that's why I'm not giving up on these seeds that I have here so I'm just doing a test sowing uh, just 12 cells normally when I'm sowing green beans um, or French beans and dwarf French beans I might add that these are um, I would normally use deeper uh, cell trays well let's see if I have an example not sure if you can see I've just brought this in from outside and I just want to compare them depth wise no you're not going to see that <laughs> There we are. That's just the uh, depth comparison. So uh, beans, peas, which are legume plants, um, all grow better in deep um, trays where they have lots of space for their roots to um, grow downwards. So they don't like to get pot bound um, and they don't like their roots disturbed. So um, when you are transplanting them then from these deep trays it's very important to just push out the wee cell and try not to disturb the roots at all if possible and um, they may tolerate a little bit of root disturbance but the less disturbance the better and um, but because this is only um test germination if and if they grow i will plant them like it's not that i'm going to waste them um but um i'm not going to get too hung up i mean i'm not going to fill a full tray of french beans just yet till I'm sure that they're germinating so I'm just going to use one of these normal trays um, but this one is what I'll be using for my peas so I have it in now for that job <clears throat> uh, and like I said I'm going to fill this with pot and compost and I'll bring you down and just show you the process I'm starting to run out of space here on my pot and bench so I'm going to try and make the most of it uh, so I'm just going to do six of each and I'm going to sow two seeds per cell so these are a yellow French bean, dwarf yellow bean called Rock and Core. I'm going to try that as Rock and Core. I'll put the name on the screen. So two seeds per cell. Now you can see the size of the beans there. I'm hoping you can see them in my hand. quite large in comparison to most seeds so 
So I'm just covering them over. And I, the French beans will be watered in once now and I will likely not water them until they start to germinate. Uh, so this is the green one, it's a dwarf Kenyan bean called Ferrari. And um, both of these uh, varieties of beans are tender and um, they don't grow terribly big and um, so it keeps them nice and tender and um, they're stringless which is another important aspect um, for green beans for fresh eating and of course these can be blanched and frozen um, you can of course just freeze them directly either but um, they tend to break down ever so slightly if you haven't them blanched first um, and of course you can also can green beans personally I don't really like canned green beans um, it gives them a funny texture whereas freezing them uh, keeps a good bit of their crispness to them now so I'm not going to water them yet I'll water them later but once th they'll be only watered once and then wait till they germinate so next on the agenda is the peas where did I put my tray and again I'm going to sow these in potting compost as well the downside to these trays is that it takes much much more compost to fill them And the variety of pea I am sowing, these are a main crop pea, uh, climbing pea called Alderman. Uh, I have yet to find a pea that's better than Alderman, to be, Alderman, to be honest. Um, and I have tried plenty. Um, they give you lots of seeds per pod. Um, and I think they're double podded. Mm, I actually can't see that, but I think they're double podded, as in they produce two pods per flower. I'm only going to sow one seed per cell in the past I have done two but I find they just get tangled up in each other I end up not thinning them out for that reason because it's too much hassle to try and get them uh, detangled so we'll do one seed maximum four weeks they'll be in this tray and then they will be in the ground um, And actually these could be left outside to germinate if I wanted and in fact I'm strongly thinking I will put them in the she shed and let them germinate in the cooler temperatures that way there'll be no hardening off to them so peas are a cold tolerant crop um, so you can sow early peas in um, February or March um, and you can also sow late peas in July August that will go into the winter Now, and all I'm going to do is just basically rub the compost around on top of them just to cover them over. Now, my next sewing project will be cucumbers. So, I'm growing two different varieties. Well, one variety of a cucumber if you can see that is La Diva and um, this is a medium sized cucumber about six or seven inches long and um, which is really about enough for a salad uh, for our size family at least and um, and again these are going to be sown directly into these four inch pots so uh, cucumbers are another plant that and squash in general they don't like their roots being disturbed so for that reason um, I will be planting one seed per pot um so that because it, i mean we have to feed them for about four weeks before they'll actually get planted out even in the greenhouse i won't be planting them until another uh, until about another four weeks planting them in the ground uh, so i want them to have lots of nutrition i don't want to have to feed them any uh, supplemental fertilizer so um for that reason i'm sowing them into these four well i think they're four inch pots three or four inch pots again pot and compost as well and these will be going in the propagator uh, and for Q 
cucumbers. Two plants are plenty for our family. Um, I can sow another one or two, probably up until, well, we say early June. Um, and I'm gonna sow two seeds per pot. Uh, and then when they germinate, pin them back to one seed per pot. Now the next two pots are for gherkins. And the gherkin that I'm growing this year is Gherkin Anulka F1. It's an F1 variety. And again, two seeds per cell, to, per pot. And all these will be watered in, of course, too. Very important. Now, I'm going to grow one of each of these courgettes. So this is courgette Black Beauty. This is a green variety of uh, courgette. Now, you will notice that these seeds are quite flat most squash seeds are so they say these uh, seeds need to be sown on their side because what can happen is uh, while they'll germinate fine regardless of what way they are uh, planted if they're lying flat they're more likely to catch water uh, and rot so that for that reason we plant them on their side so again two pair of pot And I'm just gonna stick them down on their side in the in the compost, cover them over ever so slightly. So this second variety of courgette is a yellow courgette. It's called a Tina Polka. You can't see that because it's faded on it. Uh, but I've grown this for years. Um so we call them yellow courgettes, but I know the Americans call, well, they're zucchini for a start, but these are yellow squash is what the Americans call them. All the same plant. Again, two seeds per cell. Now these are going into the propagator. Uh, at about 18 degrees just to keep them at a nice even temperature okay so I went ahead and got my pots ready for all my uh, winter squash and pumpkins uh, I'm going to quickly run through them and I hope to put a picture on the screen of each of them if I can find a picture not promising it'll be the best quality picture but It'll just give you an idea what I'm growing. Uh, so this is a gourd warty mix. So these are purely for decoration only um, or even feeding to the birds and the animals. Um, as the name suggested, uh, they're a warty mix. So they're all different colours and varieties and they're uh, covered in those little warts that you often see in decorative pumpkins. The next one is Marina di Chiogia. And honestly, I've grown all of these before, some with great success, some not with so much success. Um, I think I didn't actually get round last year to planting them at all. Um, so some of these seeds are old, they'll be sown, I'll be sown um, about three or four seeds per pot just to um, ensure I have germination. A pumpkin Rouge Vif de Tempe, another orange variety pumpkin. Um, and all these, of course, are edible. That's why I'm growing the most of them, apart from the warty mix. <coughs> uh, the next one, spaghetti squash. Uh, great for storage. Uh, good alternative to spaghetti if you're trying to cut down on flour or even gluten-free. Uh, jumbo pink banana. A nice pink, um, pink-tinged uh, banana-shaped um squash uh, grows quite big again as well honey boat delicata honey boat um, a small um, squash for roasting nearly a personal size um, 
lovely in soups as well jack be little nice little orange pumpkins great for decoration but of course can be eaten as well baby boo another white small sized pumpkin um really fits in your hand uh, and again good for decoration as well uh, the next one i have there is uchiki curry one of the most common varieties for organic growing especially um uh, medium sized orange uh well squash i was going to say pumpkin again um you usually see these in the shops um at halloween time uh for eating more so than for decor uh hunter f1 is a butternut squash variety i've grown butternut squash with great success in the polytunnel before not so much success outside but again i'm going to try it outside because i don't have room in the polytunnel realistically this year uh, then we have a gourd turks turban now this is edible but it looks stunning um you'll see from the picture if i can find one it has a kind of um it's like it has an elastic band around it basically uh, and grows in orange and green and stripes in it and it's uh, very striking to look at uh, the next one is blue hubbard a nice edible one as well uh, lovely for roasting a uh, nice bluey tinge to it as well and then the last two we have here are crown prince which um actually can't remember what that one looks like uh, orange one as well and muscat de provence uh, another big orange one so i'm just going to get on with planting these uh, like i said three or four seeds per cell or per pot just because they're older seed and uh, i want to ensure good germination uh, and then I'm going to bring you um, on a quick little tour of the plants that I have sitting here waiting to be planted out um, in the greenhouse. Okay, so that's all the squash, pumpkins, cucumbers, gherkins, um, courgettes, all tucked in there nicely. I have the propagator on again, the heat on in the propagator again. Um, it has been off for a wee while. Um, well, first of all, is confession time. I knew it was too good to be true that all my flowers would come to fruition. So some of them are the well what's left in it now are the scraggly remains um but these are cosmos some of them are still viable they just need to be put on they're very leggy but i do think some of them will come okay but i will re-sew again um next here i have some of my peppers the pepperoncini variety um and i have aubergines as well and at the very front here i have tomatoes some of them were eaten by slugs uh, so I had to come out and put slug pellets on them unfortunately now of course they're organic slug pellets uh, which makes me feel a little bit better but I don't like using slug pellets at all if I can help it um, anyway some of them have come back so that one was munched on and has actually come back uh, that one at the back was munched on as well and came back but I think I've lost well I may still get some growth on that one but these two are definitely gone um, but not to worry, I sowed plenty for that exact reason. Um, it's always better to have too many than not enough. Um, more peppers here. The poblano are at the back. Now, I trimmed these when I potted them on. Um, so, this is something I do with all my peppers. Um, I cut the tops off them. Now, some of them were actually too small that I didn't, but mo the majority of them I did. So, you can see when you look up close there, the top has been chopped off them and what it does is it encourages them to um, bush out rather than just grow sorry I'm swinging it around here rather than just grow with one big tall stem um, you see here they start pushing out new side shoots and that gives you a more stable plant when you plant it in the greenhouse um, Otherwise, you will end up with one tall, long stalk and just a few fruit coming off it. Whereas, where 
trimming them back um, will delay the fruit developing it will give you more fruit in the long run so it is worth it uh, down here at the front I have my geranium so these are uh, well let's see what do we call them geranium horizon star um, a few at the back there are stocks apricot stocks um, some of those died on me as well but I have enough got from what remained um, and at the front here uh, these are status pla uh, flowers now status are great as a dried flower but uh, the, <laughs> the plants dried out too much in the propagator in uh, one of the sunny days where I forgot to come out and open the propagator uh, so that's what's happened here with a lot of my flowers so some of it is uh, kind of a graveyard uh, hoping to revive some of these plants this one here I've just put this on yesterday and this is celosia so hopefully that will come back to life and then these are some more of the flowers that I potted on as well um, several different varieties here uh, stocks a lucinda mix of stocks apricot stocks uh, dianthus uh, so a double white dianthus uh, pink baby pink dianthus magenta dianthus and then chocolate lace flower as well uh, more tomatoes here these are all the roma vf variety which i had been waiting on those seed in a long time so they're not quite as far on as all my other tomato plants um and actually that's the same for these tigerella as well they were all in the same order um but they are still big enough for planting out now in the next few days when i hope to get the rest of them done uh, more tomatoes over here i have black cherry and golden pearl golden pearl is a very small like micro bush variety which i hope to put in a hanging basket um black cherry as the name suggests is a black cherry uh, here is flowers this is a variety of scabiosa called stellata and um, the flower on this is fabulous if I get it to flower uh, and can also be used as a dried flower uh, another tray of tomatoes and now of course I already have tomatoes up in the greenhouse beside my polytunnel so this is my second lot my second sowing of uh, tomatoes so I decided I hadn't enough colourful varieties of cherry and pear um, size tomatoes. So I have yellow pear, the black cherry, um, tigerella, and I have another one called origa, I think as well. Should be a quite small variety. Um, along the back there, well, some of those are pots of peppers that didn't germinate and along the back here I have dahlias planted um, so only one of them coming up so far it's called Extase it's an orange variety um, the other ones are called Savannah Rose Caf and two Cafe Olays um, so I'm hoping they will sprout up very soon for me and then most of the rest of the plants that I have here are the herbs that I'm growing on for selling at our uh, GIY stall uh, at the end of July. So I'm starting to worry now that they'll be a little bit too far on. Assuming, of course, that I keep them alive until the end of July. <laughs> um, so I ha if you remember, I sowed these in small little cells. I then was able to pop them on and some of them were so prolific that I was actually able to divide each cell. Uh, so first along here is oregano, I think. Yeah. So I have um, four plants of oregano. They're actually been taken over now by that chamomile. Um, next is thyme. It's just normal, common thyme. Um, then rosemary. So the rosemary just doesn't look too advanced at the minute. Um, and I have found that with rosemary, it's very slow to take off. I uh, found that in the past. But... Um, We'll see how it comes on. It still has till July. Possibly it's getting a bit too wet in here, but I do uh, intend to start hardening these off, putting them out in my she shed, which I'm going to bring you around to now as well to show you the she shed. 
this is mint um mint of course takes off like crazy and it's the egyptian variety so it's um it has a fluffier leaf as that's the only way i know how to describe it uh it looks lovely in decor if nothing else and then over here is the common uh garden mint no this is oh this is spearmint i think well let's see i have a label somewhere i think yeah there we are i think it's spearmint peppermint peppermint <clears throat> Uh, so there's quite a significant difference in the texture of the two plants. So this one has a more silvery, fuzzy look to it uh, than the peppermint. Uh, then this is the bronze fennel. And I've said I grow this for ornamental purposes as much as anything else. Uh, it grows to be a huge plant. Let's get you a better look at it there. So obviously it's not too bronze at the moment, but when it matures and gets bigger, it turns a more bronzy color and even has silvery tones at times, uh, at different times of the year. And it really is a fabulous architectural plant. Uh, next, I have lots of sage growing along here. Um, I was able to divide that up quite well. I pinched it out as well uh, to encourage it to bush out more because the same with it, it would just grow to one tall long stalk um, and very little branching out. So this encourages the branching out when you pinch out the top of them. Um, also here is flat leaf parsley, very common herb of course, and of course hopefully will be popular at the sale. And then at the back here I have chamomile that is just living its best life. Um, probably the greenhouse temperatures are setting it silly. Uh, so over the weekend now I intend to start hardening some of these off now not the tomatoes or peppers of course uh, but certainly the herbs can be hardened off um, so I'll begin just bringing them out for a couple of hours maybe tomorrow outside uh, and just increase the amount of hours over the next few days now I look some people say you should take two weeks to harden off plants um, but these herbs are all hardy plants in themselves anyway so i mean three or four days will be the most i'll spend hardening them off and again of course they're going into the she shed which i'm bringing you around to now next um so they're a little bit protected there it's north facing so they're not getting very harsh sun and also it's covered over as well so um not getting a lot of rain either um so find three or four days will be loads for hardening those off um just a few little seedlings potted on here so I, every slowly but surely I'm getting through my flower seedlings some of them um, are healthy some of them not so healthy um, but I find when they get potted on they usually come back to life a wee bit and um, so this is amaranth here um, green love lies bleeding it's the common name for that uh, more of my status here uh, it's not looking too healthy here at all this status some of them have been nabbed. I don't know whether it was slugs got to them or they just died off. They gave up. Um, and Gypsophila. So they're just potted on yesterday. So they'll take a while to bush up and look a bit healthier. But um, I'm hoping they will come on the best. Uh, up here is more status. Uh, yeah, definitely not looking so healthy. Uh, but the beauty of it is it was quick to germinate. Possibly just was too hot in the propagator. So um, when I get my some of my major planting done, I will start to re-sow uh, flowers then when I get a little bit more time on my hands again. Uh, so I'm going to bring you around to the she shed now and show you the reality of that at the moment. So this is what I call the she shed. Really, it is an area for hardening off my plants or storing hardy plants. Um, like a lot of places it can turn into a junkyard but I keep all my extra compost in here as well and trays for harvesting vegetables uh, so I have left a lot of plants in here over winter some of them have came back well some of them not so much um, that's kind of what happens when you forget about watering over the whole winter especially since we 
do have a roof on the place. Um, I have great plans to redirect the water from my greenhouse in here, but it hasn't happened yet. Um, so you can see these are, um, basically it is one big shelf the whole way around, U-shaped shelf in this little shed. The space here is covered with butterfly netting, which has fallen down over here. Um, but obviously that's to keep birds and butterflies out. Um, and what else have I to tell you? Yes, the, the shelves here are covered in a capillary matting. So this is a good way to keep the plants watered. Of course, you still have to pour the water in on top of it, <laughs> which is the problem in the winter time. Anyway, I do also have little plastic um, cover on the capillary matting in most of it. Uh, and it just helps uh, stop stuff, stop plants from rooting in into the capillary matting. When they're lying for a long time, that's generally what happens. Uh, so I'll just bring you through the plants that I have here. Well, the ones that are alive anyway. Uh, so I have lavender plants here. Uh, I still have life in most of them. I thought they were all a goner at one stage. And I could do was really trimming them all back, but it'll be done sometime. Um, and probably potting on, but I want to establish which ones are fully alive before I start potting on and wasting compost. Um, I had oxalis planted in here last year. Obviously they're a perennial plant, so they died off for the winter. Um, I'm not sure how they're going to fare, but they are like a corm, so I'm hoping they will come back to life. Um, that's the thing about perennial plants. Sometimes it's hard to tell whether they're actually dead or whether they just haven't come to life for the season yet. Um, at the back there I have a um, canna uh, called Yellow Humbert. Um, it stayed in that pot all of last year. Um, didn't really bloom to be honest. Um, and I'm not sure if it will have survived the frost this winter, but we'll see. Next I have two uh, rose cuttings that I took um, from a friend's rose to see if I could propagate. So two out of five or six survived and um, it's coming on nicely. So I have two of those there. Then I have geraniums. These were part of our GIY sale last year. Um, actually, they were part of a demo to start with um, on root cuttings, I think. Um, and we got that many root cuttings from one plant. We sold some of them at our um, our sale at the market last year. Uh, next, I have hollyhocks in here. Uh, these have been sitting in these pots probably two years, I think. They really need to go outside, but I didn't have the space for them. I did plant out some. I had many more than this and I planted them out. Um, but I'm sure I'll find a few new places this year to um, plant them out. So next I have some plants. I actually only bought these recently enough. Um, ground cover plants, more or less. Spring flower um, ground cover. Iberus and uh, saxifrage. I love these white and pink. I have some of the white ones already planted um, and I decided I wanted to get a few more out in the ground so still has to be done yet. Uh, next I have some of these uh, corms and bulbs that I'm not long after planting. So I have anemone here um, and they're all just sprouting up only in the last day or so. I've noticed those coming up. So that's good to see. Now anemone I think would normally be flowered well at this stage. They are an early flower but um, well it was either let them rot or stick them in a pot. So I decided to stick them in a pot. I'm not sure if I'll actually get flowers this year but if they grow at least I know they're alive and I can plant them out. Um, I have two echinacea roots here that I got as well. Not sure how they're going to fare. Um, but they're not that long planted. I'll give them another little while. I have three of those actually. There's another one there. Maybe four. Yeah, four. Uh, these are other cuttings that I have taken at different stages. Um, doesn't look like that one's going to come. That's one a cutting from my climate hydrangea at the front. It's had this green shoot on it for ages. Let's see if I can zoom in there on that. 
So this green shoot has been on it in a long time, um, but there's not much root action happening down in the pot, so I think I might have to give up on that. Um, next are my ranunculus, two trays of ranunculus, all pretty much all starting to sprout. Um, which I'm excited to see. Bulbs and seeds when you have them in soil are one of the most head wrecking <laughs> uh, things to do because you're just waiting tentatively to see um, if they're actually going to grow and then when, the, when you're not seeing any action you're wondering what you've done wrong uh, and then eventually you realise they've all sprouted. <laughs> so um, lots of worry and lots of anxiety. Um, unnecessary of course but uh, I think all gardeners do the same though so I'm glad to see they're all sprouting up nicely and um, so I also have the remainder of my onion plants here so these plants were all sitting around on one of the beds um, one of my raised beds so this is the Elsa Craig onion and this the Bedfordshire champion and um, they're all starting to bulb up a wee bit at the bottom so I can plant them out any time, but I'm just waiting on more space now. So I'm waiting on my ridges to be formed and rotivated. And then in at the back there, I have loads of strawberry plants. Um, this is my asparagus that I just got this um, winter. I got the asparagus crowns. Um, previously, when I got asparagus crowns, I planted them straight into the ground in about April and uh, didn't have much success so this year I decided to pop them up and I think um, the six of them have all come on. Uh, this one here isn't looking so healthy it's a little bit well it looks a little bit deformed uh, and not certainly not performing as well as the rest of them so these are ready to start um, pushing out lots of leaves. They have lovely frondy fern like kind of leaves. Um, more strawberries these are the strawberries that I transplanted that grew from seed accidentally in one of the raised beds. Um, coriander there ready to plant out that I forgot about to be honest. Uh, and then I have summer purple broccoli which I'm contemplating taking out my strawberry bed out of the raised bed and planting the summer purple in instead. I'm not sure if that's going to happen or not but we'll see. Um, and then this is just a fall gold raspberry which never got planted out. Um, I'm hoping it's still alive, but I do have more plants at the side of the house that I got rain all winter, so they may stay alive. And then the rest is the dead and dying rack. <laughs> um, so these are all plants that I've had here since last summer. Um, so this is soapwort. Uh, it's a perennial plant, so I'm not giving up hope on it. Um, hopefully it will come back. I have a lovely spot to plant it if it does come back. Uh, dead herbs, I'm assuming they're dead, but I just don't want to give up on them completely yet. So there was sage and peppermint, rosemary, thyme, all there. And then this is um, very disappointing, this Vinca Minor. I got this last year and just never got around to planting it. Um, I'm assuming it's gone as well. Yeah, it certainly looks dead, but um, we just leave, leave it a wee while and see how it goes on. And here we have a, an oregano plant as well. The, there is still life to this one. So this has survived being uh, dry all winter. Uh, and I suppose those kind of conditions tell you what plants are drought tolerant and what aren't. If nothing else, um, while it was an unintended experiment, it... Uh, I have learned lessons nonetheless. Uh, this is Brunnera that I bought last year. Jack Frost Brunnera. Perennial plant again. It does die off and return. Um, not sure. There is a wee leaf there. But um, we'll see if that starts to grow again. <clears throat> So that's the grand tour of my little space at the moment. I've had lots of interruptions uh, this evening having to run off to drop kids at football and kiltis and different things and of course the start of a bank holiday weekend where I have great intentions of getting so much gardening work done and usually everyone else decides that I have a different schedule. Um, but 
top of the agenda well one <laughs> one of the top jobs on the agenda is if you can see those two mounds there that is my mushroom compost that I'm hoping to get to my ridges uh, we'll see if that happens this weekend um, this is the area where my potatoes are supposed to go and chiefly that's what I wanted for for growing my potatoes um, hopefully I will get the added bonus of extra space for you know bigger crops like um, brassicas uh, my onions and some of my flowers that I want to grow for cut flowers but um, we'll not get too ambitious just yet um, every year there be a like I've said before there be a big list um, great intentions and then the reality of all the work that has to go into it uh, delays it by yet another year so I hope you found the video interesting today um, just another day in the garden for me really um, just trying to keep on top of everything um, next big job on the agenda of course as well apart from my ridges is the front garden the weeds are getting a little bit out of control out there um, I have perennials still to be cut back now that the weather's warming up a bit um, I'll be doing that I tend to often wait um, till I see regrowth on my perennials because um, I suppose I'm not familiar enough with them at the minute to be absolutely certain that it is um, the the flowers that I've planted so I do wait to see that little bit of regrowth before I uh, cut back the old growth from last year so that still has to be done um, I have a few casualties that aren't coming back uh, or at least it seems that way at the minute um, but you know that's par for the course with perennial plants some of them are very hardy some of them not so much and anyway it gives me an excuse to plant something else in this place um, so I hope you enjoyed what you've watched there today and, and if you haven't already uh, like the video with a thumbs up down below uh, subscribe if you haven't as well and I'll see you in the next video bye bye